we in uh, Deuteronomy, the 24th chapter, and the 7th verse. Deuteronomy, the 24th chapter, and the 7th verse. It says, if a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, stealing our brothers of the children of Israel and making merchandise of him, going to sell him or sell of him, then that thief shall die and thou shall put evil away from among you. That's what we're looking at. Because they got demons in them. They got evil spirits to do their brother like that. Most I said, put them to death. That thief shall die and thou shall put evil away from among you. This is what we got to do. It's, it's tight. I love it. Because it brings about order. It brings about a way of righteousness. According to the Most High. And he's telling us what to do. Y'all got a problem with it. Y'all got to take it up with the Most High. It's a fearful thing to follow to his hand though. Y'all can talk about Everybody else, but you talk about the most high. He said, thou, thou, you shall know that I am the most high. Look at Job 22. And verse 23. Job 22 and 23. If thou return to the almighty... He returned to the Most High, Almighty. Mashiach Yabashai, Almighty. Thou shall be built up. How are you going to return to him? Repent and keep his commandments. He returned to the Most High, thou shall be built up. Thou shall put away iniquity, put away wickedness and evil far from thy tabernacles, from our bodies. And when you do this, Look what he said. Then shall thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of Ophir, that's the best gold, as the stones of the brooks. Yeah, the Almighty shall be thy defense. Gonna defend us. And thou shalt have plenty of silver. But then shall thou have thy delight in the Almighty. You're gonna love the Most High and the Most High and, the High and shall lift up thy face unto the Most High. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee. Coming back to his rules and regulations, y'all. That's what he tells us we're going to get. He'll hear us. And thou shalt pay thy vows. You got to pay your vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. See, but we got to get rid of the evil. You got to get rid of iniquity and wickedness and them evil spirits that's within us and follow the both sides. And don't be caught up in the evil that this world is perpetrating on us and thinking it's okay. We got to remain in the scriptures. Remain in this word to be cleaned up. Psalms 34 and 16. You can roll like you want to if you want to. Hear the word of the Most High. Psalms 34 and 16. The face of the Most High is against them that do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. You hear that? I'll read you again. The face of the Most High is against them that do evil. To do what? To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. You can do evil if you want to. You cannot do what the Most High say you're supposed to do. If you want to, the Most High say he's going to cut you off and he's going to take all the remembrance of you out of the earth. See, the righteous cry. See, the righteous cry. Those that keep the commandments of the Most High cry. And the Most High hear it. Hear that? The most I hear the righteous when we cry. 
and delivered them out of all their troubles. He told us in verse 7, the angel of the Most High encampers round about them that fear him and delivereth them. You keep hearing this all in this lesson. It's all in this lesson. The people going to hear and what? And fear. The Spirit is speaking expressly. I keep hearing this. Do you hear it? Or your fear means something different? What does it mean? I call it. Let's, let's go there. Hebrews 10 31. So you can look at it yourself. Sometimes I'll be quoting the scriptures and it might go over your head. Take the time to look at what he said. Hebrews 10 31. And you tell me what this means. It is a fearful thing. To fall into the hands of the living power. What do you think fearful mean? It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. What do you think that means? Fearful. Because you come from a type of religious type of mindset, you don't believe it's you're supposed to fear the most high. Y'all got some strange doctrines. This is what it says. <laughs> Wisdom of Solomon 16. This is what it says. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power, right? Look at Wisdom of Solomon, Apocrypha 16 and 15. But it is not possible to escape thine hand. <laughs> Hear what he said? It is not possible to escape the hand of the Most High. But it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. But he says in Wisdom of 16 and 15, but it is not possible to escape thine hand, to escape the hand of the Most High. For the unrighteous that deny to know thee were scourged by the strength of thine arm. The unrighteous that want to know the most high, you don't want to keep his law, statute, commandments, you're going to keep saying that you ain't got to follow his rules and regulations. Denying to know thee were scourged by the strength of thine arm with strange rains. Y'all ready for this? Strange rains, hails, and showers were they persecuted that they could not avoid and through fire were they consumed. Y'all gotta understand this. Isaiah 29 and 6. Isaiah 29 and 6. Thou shalt be visited of the Most High, power of hosts, power of armies, with thunder and with earthquakes and great noise, with storm and tempest. That you can't, you can't, you can't escape the hand of the Most High. Just the hand of the Most High with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. Thus say the Most High. Are you ready for this? You really think you can deal with the Most High? And you know, because go go to uh, Hebrews, um, go to Hebrews um, oh, it's, uh, go to Hebrews 12 and 29, the last verse of Hebrews, the 12th chapter. It says, for our power is a consuming fire. So the Most High is a consuming fire. And it, be, it will behoove you to look at this sincerely. And not look at just me. 
but what's coming out of this Bible, his word, and change. Because the most I say he's a consuming fire, right? I Meaning he'll burn you up. There's gonna be a lot of people. That's how he's coming back to purify this earth with fire. With fire. Look at uh, Daniels had a vision of in the night. Look at uh, Daniel 7 and 7. After this, I saw in the night visions. See? So he's seeing this in the night visions. So now let's jump down to verse 9. Remember the most I told us in Job 33 and 14 down? How he's speaking visions and dreams. So Daniel said it's in a vision. He said in verse 9, he said, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. That's all the power of worship and authority on this earth going to be taken out of power. And the Ancient of Days did sit. Who the Ancient of Days? The Most High. Go to Job 36 chapter. Ancient of Days, right? Job 36 and 26. To prove that the Most High is the Ancient of Days. Behold, the Most High is great, and we know him not. His ways and thoughts are not our ways and thoughts. We know him not. Neither can the number of his years be searched out. You see? So he's the Ancient of Days. So the number of his years cannot be searched out. So now, going back to Daniel's 7 and 9, it says, I beheld till the thrones, that's powers from the authority, were cast down, going to be taken out of power. And the ancient of days, who is the most high, whose number of his years cannot be searched out, did sit. This is the most high sitting. Whose garment was white as snow. Now, this is through the lophony, which means the most high is allowing him to see a vision. It's a vision, as I showed you, first and foremost. Because the most high, I tell you in St. John 4, 24, the most high is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let me just prove something else to you so you understand why I'm saying uh, that the most high is allowing him to see something that we can relate to. Because remember, we require science. We can show him something that we can relate to. Go to, to Colossians, the first chapter, so you understand that who the Most High is. Um, Colossians, the first chapter, we'll start at verse um, uh, 14, pretending to Omashiach Yahweh in whom we have redemption through his blood. We, the Israelites, have redemption through his blood. That's why Acts 5 and 31 says, uh, repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So, it says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, his blood being shed for the sins of the 12 tribes of Israel, even the forgiveness of sins, right? So I got to go there. Since uh, some of you might not know, you might not, I'm quoting it. A lot of times I get ahead of myself. I got to remember there's people that might be the first time they're hearing this. So go to, it says, and forgiveness of sins, right? And the we have redemption. So we got to find out who forgiveness of sins was for. Go to Acts 5 and 30 and back to 5, 31. Acts 5 and 30. Hold that, we're coming back there. Acts 5 and 30, it says, The power of our fathers, who's the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, raised up a Mashiach Yavashai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. We get this right, gave him over to the Romans, and the Romans so-called white man, the so-called Italian Caucasians who are the superpower of the earth put a Mashiach of Shai to death on a tree. And we hear in verse 31 to prove forgiveness of sins of who? Him who was a Mashiach of Shai had the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel, the Israelites, and forgiveness of sins. There it is. You see? So he already said this here. Now when we go back here to Colossians, the first chapter and the 14th verse, when it says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, 
even the forgiveness of sins. He just said repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins, right? So that's how you know it's talking about we, the Israelites, and not anyone else. His blood was shed for. It says, who is the image of the invisible power? You see that? The most high is invisible. Who is the image of the invisible power? The firstborn of every creature. Mashiach was shot. Because the most high created him and the most high created everything by him. When you look at uh since we're here, go to Colossians 3 and 9. Is that what? No, Ephesians 3 and 9. Colossians. Ephesians 3 and 9. Ephesians 3 and 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. That's something that's unknown, a secret. Which from the beginning of the world, talk about Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, have been hid in the Most High. It's a mystery or secret that's been hid in the Most High. Who created all things by Mashiach Yahweh Shai. See? Who created all things by Mashiach Yahweh Shai. That's a mystery. That's a secret. That's been hid in the Most High and you hear it now. That he created all things by Mashiach Yahweh Shai. But I say, I'm shy, was an angel. He's a spirit. Like all of us were spirits. All of us we got spirit in us, right? That spirit, the most I put it in us, right? And when you die, he take it away from you. You take it out. You, you finish. But you still a spirit. You got a spirit of the most high in you. So I say, I'm shy, was a spirit. Like the most I say, he's a spirit. Invisible spirit. So that's why I say, when you go back to Daniel, remember the more we hear, because the most I say, he's consuming fire. Right? So when you go back to Daniel 7 and 9, now that you know that the Most High is invisible, so when everything that's appearing as himself that we can see is called tel telophony, meaning he's bringing forth something that we can relate to, to just like you say he's a man, but he's invisible. So how do you know he's a man? He's invisible. He said, let us go and make man in our image and our likeness. You see? So if he was appearing, like I'm saying, in telophony to show you who he was, that's how we know how he is. Daniel 7 and 9. And I beheld to the thrones, powers and authority were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow. You can't put garment on invisible. That's why he's giving us analysis of him if he were in the flesh like us. Whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool, pure nappy hair. So what's the best hair? Straight hair? Curly hair? Pure nappy hair, pure wool, pure nappy hair. <laughs> so nappy should make you happy now. <laughs> That's what my brother, by y'all, bless his spirit. He, he used to say that. <laughs> happy. Nappy should make you happy. It says, in the hair of his head like the pure wool, pure nappy hair. His throne was like the fiery flame, see? His throne is like the fiery flame. So he's fire. He could be in fire. His throne could be fire because he's fire. He could assume he's fire, right? Listen. And his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels like burning fire, right? So in a fire stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand, thousands ministered to him. Thousand, thousands of angels ministered before the Most High. And 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. Remember he said, the angel standing before him trembling? 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set. And the books were open. You see? The, the word is going to be put in all the books of everything we've done in this earth. And judgment going to come. But you see? The most high is consuming fire. And what do you say? Wow. Mm. <laughs> Praise the most high. Hallelujah. Go to Ezekiel 22 and 20. I just like when you turn the page and you go right there to what it is that he has to say. Ezekiel 22 and 20. He says, they gather silver. You can do whatever you want to do if you want to. 
But it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of living power. As they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it. As they put all these metals in the fire to melt all these metals, so will I gather you in mine anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. He's going to show me fire, y'all. Yeah, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire. You know, you blow upon the fire, it'll get hotter and hotter and hotter. Keep blowing that fire on, it's getting hot. Yeah, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath. And ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof. And ye shall know, listen at this closely, when you melt it, and you see somebody melt it, and ye shall know that I, the Most High, have poured out my fury upon you. Better understand, understand. Psalm, go to Psalms, the 37th chapter. See, it's not enough, I guess, people still think that the Most High is this little softy or something. When the Most High is a man of war, Exodus 15 and 3 say the Most High is a man of war. And what you do in war? You have strategies how you're going to kill people. You think they go to war and they look at how they're going to save somebody? They're going to war to kill people. Strategies. But we have opportunity to not have to deal with this. Psalms 37 and 9. Psalms 37 and 9. For evildoers, all you that got all these spirits of evil in you, and wickedness, and iniquity, and demons, for evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Most High and do what He say do, they shall inherit the earth. You know? They're going to inherit the earth. And for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. You know? Yet a little while, and the wicked people not going to be here no more. Yeah. Thou shalt generally consider his place, and it shall not be. It shall not be. All you see now, you close your eyes and open your eyes, and you consider his place, it's not going to be anymore. But the meek, the humble, shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. See? The wicked, they plot them against the just, you hear that? So that's why I tell you, no matter how you look at this world, everything comes back to them plotting against us, the children of Israel. Because who is it that's telling people to keep the Most High's commandments if it's not us, the Hebrew Israelites. We of the 12 tribes of Israel. I'll say it again. Show me where your religion is keeping the, telling the people to keep the 613 commandments of the Most High, teaching them. Learn it, living and applying in their life. Your religion didn't celebrate the last holiday that they had, whatever it was. And coming up to Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, they're not going to celebrate that. The slaughter of the indigenous people that was here. The aboriginal people that was here on this land. To get this land. They're not going to celebrate that. They're going to make up some other name of saying what it is. As they celebrate the slaughter of the people that was here. In the land. To get the land. They're going to celebrate and make up some other excuse about, oh, this is a time that we can come together and, and, and thank the most high for what? How about the days that the Most High say, these are my feast days? How about the day that the Most High, this Sabbath day is my holy day? How about that? 
You better ask somebody. You say you love the Most High and you're going to do what it is that he could care less about. Don't care nothing about this. You're sad because you haven't done your research to know. And we're telling you and you still want to follow the way of the wicked. You want That's evil in the eyes of the Most High. That's evil. Sad man, but it's real. Because we love to have it so. And always been this way. Psalms 119. Go to Psalms 119. Psalms 1 the 119th chapter is um a chapter, a lot of your Bibles is 22 uh it's broke down in 22 characters, and it's not an ancient Hebrew, but it generally it's in the, the Yiddish, but it's uh, the Yiddish Hebrew here, but it's only 22 characters. They just added vowels to um, their language, the Jewish people language, but it's broke down into 22 different characters that we have in the Hebrew language. Um, look at Psalms 119 and 115. Psalms 119 and 115. It says, um, if I could still be heard. Um, Depart from me, ye evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my power. You going to say that? You going to tell them that? Depart from me, ye evildoers. You going to tell them that? Or you going to compromise? Oh, it's okay. Everybody got to eat, so let me go over here and get this Thanksgiving dinner. You make sure I, you know, I don't celebrate it, but, and people come up with different names that they call it. So nobody's saying happy Thanksgiving. No thanks. They don't say that anyway. They probably say happy Thanksgiving, but I'm calling it thanks taking and stealing. Are you going to tell them, depart from me, you evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of the my, my power. <laughs> Verse 118. Thou hast trodden down all them that err from thy statutes. For the deceit is falsehood. You err from the statutes of the Most High and not keeping his commandments. Most High going to try to do He said, Thou hast trodden down all them that err from thy statutes. You think the Most High not going to trodden down you? And you err from his statutes? For their deceit is falsehood. Their lies is falsehood. Thou putteth away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore I love thy testimonies. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee. Y'all gonna wait till the Most High visit you before you understand this fear of the Most High is to be scared of him, to be afraid of him. He said you're going to be visited the Most High. What you going to do when he mock and laugh at you? My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. So you say afraid of his judgments. Are you afraid of his judgments? Or are you to the point where you don't really have to fear the Mosai? 
Because they teach you not to pay the both sides. I know I've heard enough today. Look at uh, Psalms, the ninth chapter, verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell. You know? All you wicked people out there got them demons and you, you want to be evil against the most high people and two-thirds of our people and all the nations that's against us and not trying to learn how to be righteous and change. The wicked shall be turned into hell. You can be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget the most high, hear that? You can be turned into hell. All the nations that forget the most high, you can be turned into hell. That's why he told you. Isaiah 60 and 12. Isaiah 60 and 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted and thrown in hell. Oh yeah, it's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Go to uh, Revelations. Still with this beast. Go to Revelation 13 chapter. Verse 2. Let's see. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Hmm. Remember Alexander the Greek, he wore a leopard hat. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now this dragon is a serpent. Let's, let's see who the dragon is. He told us in um, uh, Revelation 12 before he came to 13. In verse 9, he told us this in Revelation 12 and 9. He said, and the great dragon was cast out. Excuse me. The great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil. So the devil is the dragon and Satan. See? We deceive it the whole world. Lied to the whole world. And he was cast into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Now a lot of y'all talk about that. Satan was cast out of the earth and angels cast out with him. And came down here and had sex with women. No. If that's the case, how, how is it when you read Job the first chapter? Most of us say you consider my servant Job. And told Satan that Satan asked him to put forth his hand. How do I have a conversation with Satan? And he's cast out. And his angels cast out with him. He's operating like he want to operate. No. My servant said, told him. You got to bow down to the most high. You got to, him to tell you serve and him only tell you serve. Everybody got to serve the most high. Now, y'all give the devil more power than the most high. That's why the most high going to put you to death, throw you in a lake of fire. Listen at this. Because a lot of y'all following the same way they would have you follow to be thrown in the lake of fire. I'm saying that, but this is why. Listen. Revelation 13 and 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leper and his feet like unto the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon, the dragon, who was the devil and Satan and the serpent, gave him his power and his seat and great authority. You hear that? So when you look at this, when you go to, go to Matthew, the fourth chapter, hold that, go to Matthew, the fourth chapter. And um, um, let's look at uh, verse 8, Matthew 4 and 8. It says, again, the devil, same one we're talking about, 
in Revelations, take of him up into an exceeding high mountain and show of him all the kingdoms of the world, show him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. So he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of all these kingdoms. And said unto him, he said unto him, all these I things do. will I give thee. That's a condition. There's a condition. If you want this power, if you want this rulership and authority, he said, all these things will I give thee. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world, including where we are now. He said, all these things will I give thee. The condition is, if thou shalt fall down and worship me, worship the devil, worship the serpent, worship the beast, worship it, uh, the dragon, as we read in the Bible of Revelation. Then said the Messiah, I show to him, get thee hence, Satan, which is the devil, which is the beast, which is the serpent, which is the dragon. Say, get thee from hence, Satan, for it is written, thou, talking about Satan, thou shalt worship the most high, thy power, your power, and him only shall thou serve. See, he's made for his purpose, but he got to serve and obey the most high. Because he said, hey, he showed him all the kings of the world, right? He said, if thou wilt worship, fall down and worship me. See, all these things can be given to you. So that's what they're doing. They're worshiping the devil. They're worshiping Satan. Worshiping the dragon. Worshiping the beast. Revelation 13 and 2. And you know this is evil. You know this is not righteousness at all. And the beast, which I saw, was like unto a leopard, and his feet like the like feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority because it was given to him, as we just read. And whosoever he will, he give it to if you bow down and worship him. See, and I saw one of the heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. Dealing with this system of things. The Edomite system. Remember he fell in approximately. You had the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire. Then they fell approximately 193 AD. Ran into the Caucasus Mountains and they came out. That was when they were put to death. They was wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed when he came out in 14, approximately 1453 as the Ottoman Turks had started to take over till he came up to the Renaissance period, till now. And all the world wandered after the beast, them. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, see? Isn't the dragon Satan? Didn't we just read that in verse 9 in the great dragon of chapter 12? And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil and Satan. See? So, Revelation 13 and 4, and they worship the dragon or Satan or the devil, which gave power unto the beast. You see? And they worship the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Who that sound like? That don't sound like the system here in America? Hmm. And it was given to him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given to him to continue 40 and two months. See, and you open his mouth, you talking about evil spirits. These demons and people, he opened his mouth and blasphemy against the Most High. To blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, we the saints, the twelve tribes of Israel, Psalms one forty eight fourteen, all day long, and power was, and power was given him over all kindreds, and tongues and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life. I'll read you again, and all the 
All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. He telling everybody what to do. Whose names, these, these people, this is what it said, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain. Their names not written in the book of life. From the foundation of the world. Hmm. Let's read about Edom. This is from the Zonovan Compact Bible Dictionary. For all you that want to follow the way of this system or their worlds, it says Edom on page 142. It says Edom figures probably in the prophetic scriptures as a scene of great future judgments. See nobly Isaiah 34, 5, and 6. They give scriptures to back this up. Isaiah 63, 1. You can read from Isaiah 63, 1 down. It says, she, talking about the Edomites, this is the biblical name for the indigenous or aboriginal so-called Caucasian people. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from the Most High. See that? So they know this. So this is it. As I read, 2nd Ezra 6 and 9 says, for Esau is the end of the world. So they would have to be ruling at the end of the world. And Jacob, who is the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel, is the beginning of it that follower. You see? So now you're looking at trying to come out of this mindset of this wicked regime of those that are not being found written in the book of the Lamb's book of life, and it tells you in uh, Revelation 15, uh, no, Revelation 20 and 15, Salakia, it tells you, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Are you seeing this? From what they said, in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary of Edom, and what we're seeing here in these scriptures, calling together, but they figured, hey, we don't know, we keep some of much you put in the book. So we opened up all these books and looked at what's being said in these books and looked at it for what it is that's said from the Holy Scriptures. That's what we do. Compare it to what the Bible says. Do we call it? And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, it says. So there it is. So now, um, look at uh, Revelation 17 chapter. And let's look at verse Seven. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery, this is a secret, of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. Now the seven heads are the Greeks, the Romans, the Spanish, the French, the Germans, the Russian, the British. And you know, America came out of the British. So it said, and the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The ten horns are the European economic community or the European community, they call them NATO. There are ten nations that support the seven heads. The beast, so we're talking about the beast, the beast that thou saw it was and is not, because it was, that's the Greeks and the Romans, and it's not when it was ran into the Caucasus Mountains, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. I mean, Europe doesn't have any natural resources. So it's coming out of Europe, out of South Georgia, Russia, in the Caucasus Mountains. What was there? Bottomless pit, nothing. And go into perdition, go into, go into 
the evil that the most high say he made them for. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was, and it's not, and yet is. See, they was ruling, that's the Greeks and the Romans, and it's not when it was riding through the Caucasus Mountains. And, it, and yet is, now they are, here, ruling now. Hmm. So, these are the things that, a little something that uh, we need to take heed to. And... Make sure that uh, we're on point and knowing that there is a judgment that's coming. Like we had a judgment, we're not doing what the Most High told us to do. All these nations have a judgment because He haven't judged them, but the judgment is here in His words. Just like He judged us, He gonna judge them. Go to uh, go to uh, go to uh, Look at, uh, go to Nehemiah, go to book, uh, Prophet Nehemiah, the uh, ninth chapter, Nehemiah and, and the Prophet Ezra, they hung together. Look at Nehemiah, the ninth chapter, and we're going to look at verse 23. Nehemiah, the ninth chapter, verse 23. The, <coughs> the children also multiplied. How much the children of Israel are children multiplied? Thou as the stars of heaven. And brought them into the land concerning which thou hast promised to their fathers that they should go in to possess it, the land of Canaan. He promised the forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he would give us this land. So the children went in. Remember, he killed all the adults, except for Joshua and Caleb. It says, so the children went in and possessed the land. So we went into the homeland of Israel, the land of Canaan, as it was called then, and possessed the land, the children that we had in the 40 years that we wandered in the wilderness. And thou subdued before them the inhabitants of the land. So the Most High was taking care of business against the people that was living in the land, the Canaanites, destroyed them and gave it them into their hands with their kings and the people of the land that they might do with them as they would. These heathen nations, these, these are Hamites, so-called Africans. And they took strong cities in a fat land and possessed houses full of all goods, wells digged, vineyard, all this stuff done already. Wells dig, vineyards, and olive yards, and fruit trees in abundance. So they did eat. They were filled. They became fat and delighted themselves in thy great goodness. See? Nevertheless, it was living large, y'all. He said, Nevertheless, 
They were disobedient. So we refuse to follow the law, says the commandments of the Most High, as it is today. We were disobedient and rebelled against thee, rebelled against the Most High. And cast thy law behind their backs. See that? Cast the law behind their backs. And slew thy prophets, which testified against them to turn them to thee. See? Like we testifying against everyone in this world today to turn them to the most high. You're going to turn to the most high one way or another. You're going to bow down now. You're going to bow down later, but you're going to bow down to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Every last one of you. Every last one of us. <laughs> Nevertheless, they were disobedient, verse 26, and rebelled against thee. And cast thy law behind their backs. Like they said, we know the law. The same thing that we did here. Cast the law behind their backs. And slew thy prophets, which testified against them to turn them to thee. And they wrought great provocations. Therefore, thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies. Hear that? He gave us over to the hand of our enemies who vexed them. And in the time of their trouble, as our enemies were vexing us, and we were in trouble, like we in Jacob's trouble now, when they cried unto thee, hear what he's saying? You want a solution? When we cried unto the Most High, thou heardest them from heaven. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors. Who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. We got one savior right now. Ain't no man going to save us from the condition that he put us in now. Only a Mashiach Yahweh Shai with the most I tell him, Krum Abanawa. Krum, Krum Abanawa, y'all. Krum a Mashiach Yahweh Shai. To rise up, to raise Israel up. Because the Mashiach Yahweh Shai is sitting on the right hand side of the most high. A last savior. Ain't nobody else prophesied to come back. Who? Name him. Or who's on this earth going to redeem us from the condition that the Most High put us in when he told us in Deuteronomy 28 and 29, ain't no man going to save you. But after they had rest, after the Most High, we cried to the Most High, and the Most High delivered us from our enemies. After we rest a little while, they did evil again before they, hear that? Let them demons come up in us. Them spirits come up in us. Them evil spirits come up in us. In us. But after they we had rest, we had rest. Most high gave us some peace. They did evil again before the most high. That's the deep. Therefore left the thou them in the hand of their enemies.